Well, fine. As long as you live, my notifications are finally on some act right. Wow, that's a beautiful thing. I guess they want they want that Diddy news to get out there, huh? <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, Jason Reels. What up? Payday, what up? Choke no joke, the morning inspiration, morning workout. You already know, we out here. Dev Banks, good morning. Frank Hughes, good morning. I am hungry. I didn't eat no breakfast, I ain't drink no coffee. Just had me some water. Got the football games today out here in the park. You know, I sit down and watch for a little when I take my break. Sean West, what up? Brad from BK, what up? Queen Kiana, what up, baby? Eric Lewis in here. Somebody made some whipped coffee. It's so good and it's on ice. You already know. All oh, y'all having coffee, man. I'm jealous. I'll probably hit Starbucks up when I leave, finish working out. Today's Sunday, I might treat myself to a nice breakfast somewhere to go to a brunch. AC, what up? Tony Piper, what up? Black King, what up? I'm going to have the old, old school video camera. What's good? What's good? Kenyatta in here. LA Majors in here. Too rich for your blood. Today is one of them days I was excited about getting out here, but it's a lifestyle. It's a part of my life now. It's like brushing my teeth. I got to get up and do it. It's like washing my butt. I got to get up and do it, man. Let me give y'all a little tip, all right? This is wise wisdom I'm about to give y'all, all right? This is wise wisdom I'm about to get y'all. Shout out to my man O in London, hand me up.
is the wise words, all right? And you tell this to a person that don't know how, that don't have good hygiene, all right? You tell them your uncle Choke told, taught you this, all right? Now, it may sound like it come from a fortune cookie, but it don't, all right? Y'all ready? You teach your kids this and your dirty friends this. Y'all ready? You need some sun on me for this one, all right? One who goes to bed with itchy butt wakes up with smelly finger. Okay? That jewel right there is something that you can keep with you for the rest of your life. All right? One who goes to bed with itchy butt Wake up with smelly finger. Okay? Don't say I ain't teach you. So. <laughs> That's right. Choke no joke, Confucius. Confucius say, one who go to bed with itchy butt. Wake up with smelly finger. All right? And put that in your fortune cookie and eat it. You stinking asses. In other words, take a shower before you go to bed. Take a bath before you go to bed. Wash your butt before you go to bed. Joke, no joke. It's the morning news. Morning inspiration, morning workout. We out here to get some, at least a little three miles in today. Do some push ups, some jumping jacks. Probably even going to the park and do a few little pull ups. You know, this is my final week for getting back into it. And next week, well, this week, starting tomorrow, I incorporate going back into the gym with the weights. My shirts is already tight. I'm gonna have to switch up in a minute. Cause I'm going, I'm going up into the 200s and uh, bulking up beefing up gotta make sure my smack game is on a hundred so few things we gotta address I know a lot of y'all in here for the diddy diddy ass is in trouble boy boy he in trouble Never did he think this day would come. It's a beautiful day to get out and walk, y'all. If you're in the house, go and put on some. Take your phone with you. You can watch me while I walk, and you can walk with me. But it's beautiful out here today. I don't know what city you're in. It may not be, but. Look at all these. Hey, out here. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm going to get into Diddy in two seconds, but let me say this real quick. If you're in California, y'all know that storm is coming, right? 
you're in California, you know Hurricane Hillary is coming. It's so ironic that it's Hillary and Trump is the guy here, out here getting indicted. We got a hurricane called Hillary, right? I think that's a coincidence. And now what they're saying is that now all of a sudden there's fires starting in Washington. So you know what they're going to try to pull, allegedly, right? The fires up in Seattle or up in Washington, they're going to be going. This hurricane's going to hit and go right up the coast and go right up towards Washington. And then they're going to say that the hurricane spread it to fires and a whole bunch of people, they're going to burn them out. Some news stations are reporting that there hasn't been a hurricane in California in 20 years, which I don't believe because I've been living longer than 20 years and I never remember California having a hurricane. But there are other news outlets reporting that the last one was like 80 years ago, around World War One. That sounds more realistic to me. But if you're looking around and you're looking at the world and you're looking at all these tragedies going on out here, like in Maui, they done burnt all these people out and now these, they calling people, asking them, do they want to sell their land? People calling people to see if they want to sell their plots and stuff like that. You know what that was, bro. All the rich people areas where Oprah and all them live out there in Maui, that shit ain't, that shit ain't get touched one bit. This land takeover is real. Oh yeah, this, this is this is definitely. I don't think a coincidence. Definitely a part of a, a, a major plan. It's like it's like America. We are we are on the war with somebody, and they 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 not dropping bombs on us. They just burning us out and using a biological warfare, chemical warfare with uh, viruses and, and stuff like that. It's too much stuff getting flooded and burnt up and like we got a mad, and they could just be God coming back with all this Sodom and Gomorrah and all this evil and stuff and people out here thinking they men when they women and women thinking they men when they women and all that craziness going on, man. It ain't no telling. It, this just may be revelations. This may just be the prophecy. God coming back. Iris, thanks for the cash app. Iris, appreciate your love. Ma, 
modern day Babylon. Right about that. Damn, I ain't even count those push ups. It don't matter as long as I did so. So, yeah, so if you on the California side, you got people on the California side, just check with them. Check with them, call them. The, the hurricane ain't, it didn't, hasn't made landfall yet. But it did break down from a four to, I think it's like a two or a one by now. So it may not be as bad, but it's definitely gonna be some flooding and some power outages. So make sure your people's on point and know what's coming, all right? Somebody says drizzling now. LA Major, where you at? Let us know where you at. And they saying that this thing is going to go as far as Vegas. I thought Vegas would be safe. And at least it ain't no much water around Vegas. So I don't think they got to deal with no worry about no floods. Unless they have tremendous downfalls of rain. There's a tropical storm now. They overhyping it. First came in a hundred years. And first hurricane in a hundred years in Vegas. It's the mudslides. Yeah, that's what Cali gotta be worried about. The mudslides. And I've been seeing them putting down like a lot of top and stuff around houses and stuff to try to prevent the mudslides. But um, I will be getting back to uh, Kelsey's uh, testimony today. Probably about like three o'clock, three, four o'clock. I'll be back on with the uh the rest of the testimony for uh, Kelsey's. And then after the Kelsey, I'm getting into Megan's testimony, which is gonna be very interesting for those people that never got to hear Megan's testimony in this case. To all the promoters out there, especially if you're in Atlanta, the Georgia area, all promoters, and can y'all please help me with this? All promoters. I'm doing the show called Things to Do. Please contact me and you'll get free promotion right here on my channel. All right, I'm doing a show called Things to Do. And it don't matter where you at, because people watch me from here to Great Britain, to Canada, to Africa, and all over the United States. But uh, all promoters, hit me up at Choke No Joke, official on Instagram, Choke No Joke at Gmail. You got events that you want to promote. All right, you can do that for free with me. All right, hit me up and I'll tell you what uh, you need to do. All right, so I'm doing a show, y'all, called Things to Do. All right. It's part of my, my show, my traveling show. All right, I'm starting my traveling show next week. And uh, I'm just gonna be traveling 
and going different places, different cities, and doing uh, taste testing, reviews on places to eat, clubs, venues, all types of stuff. So if you have a business and you want free promotion and you want to be a part of things to do with Choke No Joke, hit me up, Choke No Joke at Gmail, send me an email. If you go on my website, send me a message, ChokeNoJokeProductions.com. You can hit me up on uh, Instagram, Choke No Joke, official, Twitter, TikTok. I'm on Twi TikTok for all y'all that's on TikTok too. You know what I mean? So all promoters, whether you're in Georgia, whether you're in uh, Charlotte, whether you're in wherever. And that goes to all corporate companies too. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of y'all got tours coming into these cities like Live Nation. You need to hit me up. Y'all got a lot of shows that be coming around that nobody don't know about. So things to do with Choke No Joke is going to let the people know what to do wherever city, wherever you at, whatever country, hit me up. All right? Hit me up, Choke No Joke official, or Choke No Joke at Gmail. If you have an event that you want to promote, all right, at this time, I'm letting promoters that got events coming up. Hit me up. All right, hit me up. I'm not talking small promoters. I'm talking you big promoters too. Not just the small promoters. I'm talking you big promoters. If you work at a major company, a major record label or something like that, and you need, you got any events coming up, or you got a great restaurant, now's the time to hit me up. I may not be this generous for too long. All right, take advantage of the promotion. I'm doing 2 million views a month all over the world, okay? And uh, for all those who wanna travel with me, I'm getting ready to put another trip together to Barcelona, Spain for next year. $600 for seven days. Don't say I didn't tell you. If you want the information, you want to go to Barcelona for $600, double occupancy that is, got to be two of you, 600 each, hotel and flight included, round trip from JFK. If, you were, if you're interested in that, hit me up on Joke no joke at Gmail. I'll let you know what, what dates we going, or you can, you don't gotta go on my dates, you can go on your own. But I'll give you the plug. I'm not selfish. I'm not selfish. I will give you the hookup. All right. But uh as y'all can see, we just took it, we taking the trip to Italy. You know what I'm saying? I, in uh 2024. So now I just got this new one. For Barcelona, Spain, seven days, 600, double occupancy. And that's your flight and hotel included. And it ain't no bum ass hotel and you get breakfast every morning, complimentary, all right? If it sound like a good deal to you, you got a birthday coming up between November and March and you wanna go and you got your passport, holla at me, all right? And if you wanna come hang out with me, and my peoples, hit me up and I'll tell you which day we going and you can do that too. We already got a trip going on. Y'all going to see the joke, no joke, things to do show is going to be lit. They looking at this deal right here. Can y'all see it?
funny thing. I was just going to walk through there. Right out there. Eric, you said you never been on a plane before. You too damn nervous. Man, you don't get your little punk butt on a goddamn plane and experience this thing called life. You ain't lived life until you've been on the plane. Brother, come on, Eric, man. No fear out here, man. Ain't no fear with you. You see how many of us flew? How many people in your family flew places? And you depriving yourself of seeing places like Turks and Caicos? Where the water is so turquoise and blue? You feel like you're on fantasy island. You looking around for Mr. Rock and Tattoo to walk out on your ass. Or go to Panama with the women. Whoa. Oh, Eric, get your ass on the plane, brother. You tripping. Do not deprive yourself of life. I, you, I'm afraid of heights. Well, I was afraid of heights. And then I went skydiving to get over my fear of heights. I went and jumped out of the plane, 12,000 feet. And I wasn't scared of nothing no more. I wasn't scared of anything after that. When I hit that ground, I was ready to go right back up. But I would, I punked out. When it was time for me to jump, they pushed me out the plane. Because I was like, you got to be on one knee, and you looking down, and you, you can't even see. You can't see people. You can't even see cars. You so high up. And you're supposed to go on one knee on the floor. You go one, two. Three, and you supposed to just go and fall out the plane, push yourself out? I was like, one, two, I don't think I could do this. I don't think I, that nigga pushed me out the plane. That first 60 seconds is just a free fall. You just going down. That's just the best feeling in the world, boy. Then you pull that parachute, whoo. That shit yank you up in the air, woof. And then everything's just cruising from there. And you just feel like a bird, it's dead silence. You hear nothing that's going on down on the earth. You can't hear nothing. You just up there. And everything that's little just starts appearing to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the buildings are getting bigger. Then the cars are getting bigger. Then you're starting to see the people. And then they getting bigger. And everything on the earth is just starting to get big when it was, everything was just so little. And then you come down, and I did it in my Tim's. I did it in Tim's. Shout out Lisa Ray. She, me and Lisa Ray, we went, and went skydiving together. I gotta get that video from her because she got it on video. Now I regret not buying the video. But I still got my certificate. Monet, what up? Now, nah, me, uh, me and Lisa Ray, we went skydiving and uh, Damn, what's the name of that part? It was in California, though. Um, something Canyon. Uh, something with an M. Damn, what was it? it was some Canyon. I forgot the name of it. Something with an M. I, it'll come to me. But yeah, don't don't hang out with pretty women like her. They'll talk you into doing some crazy things. And make you jump out of the goddamn plane. And I was scared, but if she was gonna do it, I was not gonna sit there and let her do it and I don't do it. Hell no, you know how I would have looked? Like a stone cold punk. Use a pussy. <laughs> Which is a good 
you said bet she wore all white to skydive too. She did. She definitely did. It's actually on her show, uh, the TV One show that uh, one that she did that I produced, uh, the real McCoy. Yeah, but uh, let's get on over here to, 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 to Puffy, Keefy D, the Notorious B.I.G., Tupac, rest in peace. Puffy, I believe he has had his day. I think that he thought that he was going to ride off into the sunset and the movie was going to end good for him. You know, after Craig Mackton died, Andre Orell died, Black Rob died, Kim Porter died, Biggie got killed. Mace partially lost his mind. Nigga had an identity crisis. This nigga don't know if he want to be a rapper, a pastor, a pastor, the rapper, the rapper, the pastor, to sportcaster. So, Puff started off. Let's let, let's let, let's look at the story of of Sean Puffy Combs, right? Puff started off as a dancer. He was doing music videos, he was a dancer. He didn't grow up in the streets. He didn't grow up in the projects. He wasn't selling drugs. He wasn't a gangbanger. He was a good kid that went to college, I believe Howard University, and made his way into the entertainment business, starting off as a promoter, a dancer promoter, you know, dancing for the likes of Heavy D and other people. Um, being a promoter when he did the, the City College thing, which uh, ended up in resulting into a lot of people getting killed. Uh, and he did that with, I think, Heavy D and um, Jessica Rosenblum. And um, they, early on, throwing parties. And they had a very bad, 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 bad incident, tragedy. And rest in peace to those who lost their lives in City College um, in New York City. Oh, let me get these push-ups in real quick. So Puff wasn't a gangster, right? But he became one. And I'm going to tell you how he became one. So going from a club promoter and stuff, he ended up at Uptown Records where he got an internship from the late Andre Harrell who had a deal with MCA and created a, a label called Uptown Records. Andre Harrell, he originally came from a group called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. High, where he was a rapper as well. But 
he trans over transitioned, started his label, signed the likes of, you know, Albie Shaw, Mary J. Blige, Finesse and Sequence, Groovy Chill, Heavy D, Father MC, Joe to see, and many other acts, you know. Sorry if I forgot any of y'all, left any of y'all, but there's plenty more. Um, when he got to uh, working for Andre, that was his introduction into the music industry, right? So he wasn't a gangster then. Now, hip hop started taking off. And on a major level to where people are now selling millions of records opposed to being proud to just go gold. And uh, at this time, you know, Puff is doing a great job over at Uptown Records. But then he started feeling himself a little bit. And Andre and Rell had to punish him. And he had to get fired. And then he went off to start his own label, Bad Boy Records. But he actually was doing Bad Boy Records while he was at Uptown. Because I used to go up to Uptown. And I was shopping my demos in around like 91, 92. To... Uh, to puff and them because uh my man Lionel Fordham he was working at Bad Boy he created the, that Bad Boy logo shout out to Lonnie Fordham from Lincoln Projects um so He started Bad Boy while still at Uptown. And his first two artists under the Bad Boy label was Craig Mack and the Notorious B.I.G. Or Biggie Smalls at that time until he figured out he can't use the name Biggie Smalls because this other dude had the name Biggie Smalls and he was going to sue him. And Big couldn't buy the name from him, so he became the notorious B.I.G. Um, Puff started pushing Big and Craig Mack. But Craig Mack actually became bigger than Puff. I mean, bigger than Big in the beginning. He had a hit called The Fla Flavor in Your Ear. And that that was the song that made Bad Boy a household name in New York City. That was the song that broke Bad Boy. That was the song that got uh, Bad Boy the recognition that Puff could do it on his own. After, and Big had did a few little remixes and stuff like that out there. He had some stuff out there. But Flavor In Your Ear is the song that made Bad Boy popular. And then after that, you know, uh, Puff dropped the, the Craig Mack album, Operation Lockdown. As y'all can see, I ain't got no notes. I'm just a hip hop historian. I lived it. Hip hop's my little brother, all right? Um, what you call it? Uh, Craig Mack drops Operation Lockdown. It does good. He drops the Flavor In Your Air remix. And now Big is starting to come up. So by the Flavor In Your Air remix with Big on it, now Big is, he's popping. Now Big is popping. And now that Big is popping, uh, he's getting it a little more notoriety than Craig Mack. So Puff starts to fall back 
off of Craig Mack and put all his energy in the big. And then he completely shits on Craig Mack when big takes off. So after that, everything is launched. Now, bad boy is official. They moving. Puff getting money now. Now, bullshit is happening. So now Puff got to get the street niggas around him. This is where the wool, where the wolves and, you know, probably the dudes that before wolf come in. All the street dudes start coming around. And then they start coming around as the same way if you reverse it and you look at Shug. Shug was a good kid. Both parents in the house. Grew up in a bad neighborhood, but his parents keep kept him away from the, the goons and the goons and ghoulies, the, the the bloods and crips. She kept him away from it. But as he got older and got into the music industry, being a bodyguard, and not a gangbanger, was not out there gangbanging anything. He came a bodyguard for Bobby Brown. That led him over to you know, the whole Vanilla Ice situation. And then boom, next thing you know, he meet Harry O and them and they start Death Row Records after he get Dre out of his situation with Easy, right? Then he starts adopting all the street niggas once he get money too. So him and Puff got that in, uh, in common that they became gangsters when they got some money. Hold on a second. So they both, they both basically surround themselves with a bunch of street dudes, right? And um, once they uh, got money, the more money they got, the more power they got, the more they started thinking that they were gangsters. Now, back in the days, we we used to call Puff a paper gangster. You know, because he would do some gangster shit to you, but on paper. So we used to call him a paper gangster. Because, you know, he'll rob you, but it would be contractually robbing you. He just wasn't, you know, putting a gun in your face. So back in the days, we used to refer to him and dudes like him as paper gangsters. But when they started bringing the the wolves, Wolf, Anthony Wolf Jones, and then, you know, you got Suge, they got the bun trees around him. You bring in a whole different element to, to, to the business. So now you feeling protected. So now you taking advantage of opportunity to do things to people that you normally wouldn't do because you got some dudes who are throwaway niggas. You know what a throwaway nigga is, a nigga that, you know, you pay him money or you give him weed or you let him hang out with you, you know, and you put them on the front line and they think they dedicated to you uh, or they are dedicated to you out of loyalty and stuff, but you really using them to be a throwaway nigga. So when an incident happened, you put them in the front line, you tell them to handle it. If they get killed or go to jail, that's all right. That's what they was there for, to be thrown away. So you can remain on top, right? It's like the game of chess. All the pawns is in the front. The king and the queen, they all way in the back. 
you got to get through all the pawns, the rook, the knight, and all these other motherfuckers before you get to the king and queen. Those, the pawns are the throwaway niggas, okay? The wolves, the bun trees, no disrespect to them, but that's what they are. You, you, are, you are there because if something's going to happen, you're going to handle it. You know, and then with the way you're going to handle it is only two options. You're going to jail or you're dying. You know what I'm saying? You, no one has a license to kill, to shoot, this, that, and the other. Right? So, um, crash dummies, whatever you want to call them. Same thing to me. I call them throwaway niggas. You just throw them away. Niggas go to jail. You know what I'm saying? They forget about you. They stop sending you packages and all that stuff. They just throw you away. They just send you to the system. Throw you away. So let's we reestablish to how Puffy became this tough guy. So now with that position, that uh, with these the, now that he got money and he could pay lawyers and he could pay street dudes to uh. To protect him, now you see Steve Stout. He go hit Steve Stout with a bottle. They go beat up Steve Stout over the uh, the Hate Me Now video. You know, you got Puff punching Drake or slapping Drake. You got... The, the, the incident with Sean, you know, the shooting in the club. Now he's finding himself in some gangster shit. Wolf get killed down in Atlanta. You know, Suge Man, uh, Jay get killed. You know, all of, you know, all this stuff is going on. And these dudes are supposed to be Clive Davis, Jimmy Iovine, Barry Gordy. But these niggas is gangsters. They in the street doing some gangster shit. To the point where now these two dudes, Suge and, and, and Puff, got a beef when they used to be friends. You know what I'm saying? But Tupac used to be cool with Puff and, and Big. But this music shit and the niggas around them influenced a bunch of gangster shit. Nonsense. When they supposed to be Barry Gordy and Jimmy Iovine. But they being Pookie and Goldilocks out here. So it gets to the point where Puff allegedly probably put money to get on dudes' heads to get people beat up and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm probably sure he did. I'm sure he probably paid to get niggas beat up for messing with Kim Porter, allegedly, all kind of stuff. Because the money started getting to his head and started really fucking thinking, making him think that he a monster, right? Allegedly, right? Same thing with Suge. And look where it ended Suge at, right? Suge is more based thing is based on karma. And the reason I say Shook thing is uh incident is based on karma being the fact that that was his friend. You know what I'm saying? He ran over his friend. But that come that come with the energy from all the negativity that he was on. They had niggas drinking piss. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you ever heard stories about Barry Gordy making fucking Smokey Robinson drink piss. You get what I'm saying? 
niggas they they took they took their gangster shit too far, way too far. So now they get to the point where Puff thinky that he's so cuff, he's so cocky and confident. That he done got away with so much shit, shined in t- 10 years. He done got away with all a lot of shit that he going to tell Keefe D allegedly that he got a million dollars for him to take care of Suge and Pac. Right? Now, Suge and Pac get killed. Keefe D is out here claiming it. That they did it. And he's, he's claiming that they did it for Puff. But Puff runs his mouth so goddamn much. If you go listen to the song Mind Games, where uh, Puff is on there talking, and it sounds like him and Black Rob are responding to the Machiavelli album. You know what I'm saying? And if you go in my stories right now, I mean, not my stories. If you go in my community chat right now, I posted the lyrics to Mind Games with with Puff talking. And Puff, stupid ass, allegedly, he is admitting to putting a million dollars on a nigga head. And he said, yo, a lot of y'all niggas think with y'all brawn, which means y'all size, y'all big. He talking about Shook. You know the towels, brawny? Yeah. He said, a lot of y'all think with y'all brawn. We think with with our brain. Nigga, I'll put a million dollars on your head, nigga. Go go look at the go look in my, my, my community chat right now. Hey, hey, look at the lyrics. While y'all go look at that, me, I'm gonna do another set of push-ups. Look at look in my community chat. And look at the lyrics. I just posted them, screenshotted the lyrics, and I posted them. Puff, that's Puff talking on the song. He just admitted it to it. And they're going to use these lyrics against him, stupid. We in a whole different time now, Puff. You probably could have did that back in the day. Now they're going to use that against you, brother. That's it. You admitting it. That is no coincidence. What you going to say? It was a coincidence? I'm out here getting it today, y'all. That was 50? Good money. Twenty five. I said is a good, is good. Yeah. So I don't know if y'all got a chance to look yet, but 
You remember in the song, Tupac say, my fall fall make sure none of your kids won't grow no more. Black Rob responds to that in the same song right before Puff come on and start talking. And Puff ain't rapping that. He's talking that. So he ain't going to be able to say, oh, yo, those was just lyrics. I was rapping. No, he talking that shit. Real cocky and confident. So Puff, and if y'all not aware, they are uh, the this the assistant district attorney in Las Vegas Metro has uh, presented their case to a grand jury. So it's only going to take less than thirty days for this grand jury to go through this evidence, to go through this evidence to see if they're gonna indict Keefe D. Once they indict Keefe D, which they will, I'm pretty much sure of it, because they're using all his confessions in his book, he told on himself. So it, it, it ain't gonna be hard for them to, what you call it, to, to hit him with the indictment. Once he gets indicted, they're going to sit down and they're going to question him as to why he did it. And then they're going to ask him, well, you said that Puff offered y'all money. And then what's going to happen is after they bring Puff into it, that's when you're going to get people like Gene that's going to get indicted for saying that he saw Puff uh, give the check to Zip or something like that, allegedly or whatever. So from there, they gonna start pulling in all these witnesses and all these people that talked. Puff ain't gonna be able to say he don't know the Southside Crips. That nigga's in the studio with them, with Bone Thugs, with Biggie, Orlando Anderson, Puffy and all of them when they did recorded uh, Notorious Thugs. Orlando Anderson's right in the picture with Puff. So whether they say KVD did it or Orlando Anderson did it, Puff ain't gonna be able to say he don't know these niggas. Not to mention them being at them with at concerts with them. Other pictures and video, he's in the vicinity with them. Puff is screwed, bro. And then they got you on songs, making confessions, making threats. And all y'all they be saying that Biggie wasn't dissing Pac. Y'all niggas is bugging. Y'all wasn't no big fans like I was to say that Big wasn't dissing Pac. Y'all niggas is crazy. That whole life after death, he was he was slaughtering Pac.
he was definitely just a pocket. It wasn't just a pocket, it was a secret back then. All of New York knew that was a fact. 50, good looking. I make your mouth peace, so beast like Della Reese. When I lose, you lose teeth like, when I squeeze, you lose teeth like little C's. Nigga, please, blood fudge, you dung and reese. And that's half a path, no more more path. Laugh now, cry later, I rhyme greater than the average player hater, the spectator. Play my CD twice, niggas in the streets be like, yo, he nice, but that's on the low though. Got a cast with no dog. Something, something, short change niggas. Short change niggas, snort cane niggas. That's Pac, nigga. Short change, nigga. Short change, nigga. Walk the range, nigga. Nigga still, nigga. Me. I'm saying this song, scribble me. I don't see he's crippling me. Now I'm high like my girl nipples be. Y'all know the rules. Move from BK to New Jerusalem. All the blames you too. So it's just so Now I'm saying time. Nice, nice, huh? Niggas want my spot, take two. Talking about Pac when you say, niggas mad cause I'm blue, niggas envious. So many niggas on my dick, shit strenuous. When I say, huh, 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 and much stamina, slugs miss you. I ain't mad at you, we ain't mad at you. That's Pac, bro, I ain't mad at you. Slugs crushing, concussion, concussion. Red sand gone, sound concussion. And the right Russian, Mr. C's. I'm system knocking me shit, face it, hard to hit. I'm trying for the rear, like the peer. Let's walk the reader, long kiss. That, that son, long kiss, good night. He's talking about how a flame and gas at your fucking main. He asked, who put my name in raps? What part of the game is that? Fuck it. That's his Duchess. He said, uh, may your soul rest, may your soul be sleepy, rest beneath me. You creep, nigga, you sleepy when you creep me. My nine fives, back ties, rap guys with the Holy Ghost, put holes on shaky. He told my pocket right there too. Rap, my nine five rap, my, my, my nine five, my nine five baptized rap God, all you on God, all you on go, on on the most. Hold your gun shaky, look how you make me. Do you, your brain's blue. My team in the Marine, blue coop, skeet it out. That's crip shit. Marine blue coop, skeet it out, weed it out. Blocks for distances. <laughs> Nigga, long kiss, bitch. He's definitely talking about pop. Especially that, that spot, that part. Wait, what line is that? What verse is that? It's, uh, it's flame and gas at your fucking main he acts. Uh, uh, uh. I know the first verse was about Buckshot and uh, Boot Can't Click. When he say, I can't believe you run, running with those pricks. Trying to blow up like Nice Joe and Dynamite Sticks. Man, I rock something and something that's sick. Got paid with my own flow, run with my own click. Take trips to Pyro, laying with your bitch. Playing, you was fucking Rick, you fucking Rick. That's kicking the door. All right, that's that's Nas boot camp and pop. It's, it's one. It's the last verse I think on Long Kiss Goodnight. How that verse start? Mm. Is it whatever, whatever verse when he say he say bullets tapped your spine, flat line. I heard from the grapevine. You got fucked four times. 
Damn, that three to nine fucked you up for real, though. Slug slink, so ask me remorse, I feel no. He's talking about Pac right there, bro. For a fact. Laugh now, cry of hater. I rhyme greater than the rabbits play a hater. A spectator. Get my CD twice. See me in the streets. They be like, yo, he nice. But that's on the low, though. Be cast with no dough trying to play me at my show. I pull out four foes and go up in the clothes. Short cane, nigga. Snort cane, nigga. Store she came quicker. Bought the range, nigga. Nigga still ticking me. Because I speak strong as Ripple B. Since little C's almost crippled me. My heart like my girl's nipples be. You know the rules. Move for BK to new to rules. Motherfuckers on Jackson too. Motherfuckers mad cause I'm blue. Niggas envious. Too many niggas on my dick. Shit straighten your wrist. When I'm just. Subs met you. I ain't mad at you. We ain't mad at you. Blood rushing, concussion. That's something happening up second. Smoking something. And the bins bumping. My system and seeds. My connection. Face it. Hard to hit. I hit my feet for your rear. Wipe the pee up. Shot swap your seat up. Go on the ashtray. Swap the weed up. Long kiss. I can't think. But when he say... Bullets tapped your spine, flatline, heard from the grapevine. You got fucked four times. Damn, that three to nine fucked you up for real, though. That He's talking Tupac, brother. He is talking Tupac, without a question. And if y'all remember the Rap City that aired the same day he got killed, Joe Claire acts big. He was like, yo, it's rumors that, that Pac slept with faith and big said if he did he won't know more that night big got killed i think that that is what aggravated the shit out of them cali niggas i think that response right there is what made niggas move that night because big show he had no remorse and bt sucker asses after he got killed they clipped they clipped that out the um out the show, so because they didn't want their names, because they didn't want to fall, uh, fall for blame like vibing them. They, 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 BT was fucking hyping the shit up with the interviews and shit, going back and forth, hyping that shit up. And then nigga Big said, Yeah, well, if he fuck Faith, he won't fuck her no more. Like that nigga dead. And that nigga was, and he was dead that night. That night, he was dead. If you doubt anything that I'm saying, go to at Joe Claire. J-O-E-C-L-A-I-R. Joe Claire is the one that uh, interviewed him. Now, I still got this interview, but it's, it's buried because it's on the old VHS because I was taping the show. I used to tape all the rap cities and stuff. So I got like archives of rap cities, old school. And I got that that show, and BT cut it, and they never aired it again. But Big said when he's sitting in that park with that royal blue Brooklyn men's shirt with the orange logo on, and he's sitting in the park with Joe Claire. He said, "Yo, there's rumors that you uh Pac has sex with Faith." He said, "Yeah, if he did, his ass won't no more." And Pac was dead, bro. He said that sitting in the goddamn park in California. That night, that nigga was dead. Hit up Joe Clay and ask him. Hey, Limited Black, if you really got that, send it to me. Send it to me, choke no joke at Gmail. So I could post it. Well, send it to me on my Instagram, Choke No Joke Official. Thank you, Brenda, baby. Right back at you.
All right, y'all. I'll be back on about 4 o'clock to finish up Kelsey's testimony and get into Megan's. I holler back at y'all in a minute. I got to go take a shower. This sweat is running down my goddamn back so bad right now. All right. Thanks for y'all to count with them push-ups. I appreciate you. I think I did over 200 today. I holler back at y'all later. All right. Hey, Brookie. Be wanna holler back. One.